our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Philippians in the third chapter, verses 12 through 16. There Paul writes, It's not that I've already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. So, all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. And if anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to them, to him or her. Only, let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is David Johnson. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are so grateful you're worshiping with us. Whether you're online or here in person, it's important to be embodied together as the body of Christ to bring praise to God as we continue our sermon series from pandemic to praise. Some of you may have had a great week, others more challenging week. I'm looking at you UT fans. Others may, the life has gone the way you wanted or you've had a lot of struggle. You may agree with what we have to say here or disagree with what we have to say here. But in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone is welcome here. Let us pray. Ever-present God, we rejoice that you're a God who's always with us. Whether we're on the mountaintops or we're in the valley, you're calling us to new beginnings, something better than we could ever expect when we're in relationship with you. Let that peace give us a peace that passes all understanding, no matter where we are in our journey of life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I quit. I'm done. I'm out of here. Have you felt like you're just off track? out of sync, saying those phrases sometime during 2020. It's been a challenging and hectic time. Maybe your life looked a little like this picture here. It's a picture of my nephew, Bennett. He's the youngest with a Texas Tech shirt, reading to his teacher via Zoom. Well, my sister is set up on the computer screen trying to get some work done. My sister is an engineer, and she works for a natural gas company trying to get natural gas to flow throughout the country. And the picture there with all those screens is she's trying to get her work done, and there was a cup of coffee that probably was cold by the time she actually got a sip while trying to manage Bennett, and William was on the other side of her trying to learn. It's a challenging world to live in. Her boys are now in in-person school, but they're in this digital space. Digital is a combination of face-to-face -face and digital. I think it's my favorite 2020 world. And this digital space is just so challenging. We're in it in our worship experiences. We're in it in our learning and work. It can be challenging. And 2020 itself, with all the loops and turns that it has is challenging enough as it is. How do we carry on throughout these struggles, these pressings of our lives? Some of us have certainly felt like saying, peace out, I'm done, I'm out of here. I'm so exhausted. I feel like I'm burnt out with all the challenges 2020 has brought out. And it may be with your job, a relationship, your HOA, or even your church. These tensions are tough. So how do we get through the rest of 2020? How do we get them as human beings, but more importantly, as people of faith, as followers of Jesus Christ? Life is tough. And trying to be a Christian in this world, especially during this season of life, seems almost impossible. Do we quit? Do we run away? Do we just ride the ride of 2020 with bated breath? Do we take a nihilistic view, or is there something else that we can do? Paul's letter to the 
Philippi, I think might have a solution for us, especially in chapter 3, in this book of joy that he writes. And he starts off saying that, not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ took hold of me. In Methodist speak, Paul is saying he hasn't quite reached Christian perfection, kind, not, right reached, not quite reached that being perfected in love. He's still working it out, how to live his faith as boldly as he can out each and every day. He's not quite there yet. The word obtained in Greek is lambano. Say lambano with me. Lambano. It means to grasp or to catch. It's kind of like a hunter going after its prey. Paul is chasing after Jesus. Paul then says he has not arrived And this not arrived is this word teleos, kind of like a telescope. It's far off, something in his path, in his sights he wants to reach, but he is not quite there yet. He's a work in progress, like me, like all of us here today. Then Paul says he presses on to take hold. And this word lambano is used actually three times in this verse. And here it's katalambano. He is chasing after or grasping after it like a hunter after the prey. Because Jesus took hold of him. Because Jesus katalobanoed him. Jesus is drawing us into a deeper relationship with him. And Paul is responding to that in Christ. God chased after him, and now Paul is chasing after God. Paul's life is a response to Christ chasing after him. Have you ever seen a couple that's been married for a long time? I remember I was at some event at my grandparents' house. My grandma in her 80s was hustling and bustling around, just making sure everyone was having a good time. And I was on a couch with my grandfather, Pa, and my dad. And as we were talking, my grandpa goes and looks out at my grandma and says, wow, isn't she beautiful? Isn't she an amazing woman? After 60 years of marriage, they still had this glint in their eye for each other. It was almost like I saw teenagers look at their first love. It was the same look he had in his eyes for his wife. After all that time of being married, they kept chasing after each other in love. It's the same love that God chases after us. It's the same love that God wants us to respond to him in each and every day. I think this is the good news of the gospel. And then Paul says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. This brothers and sisters phrase is typically at the beginning of a new thought or the beginning of a letter, like an introduction. Because being in community, being embodied together was important for Paul. But it's here in the middle. And a lot of scholars believe that it's here in the middle because it's a way to catch the listener's ear, saying, pay attention. I'm about to tell you something very important. And he goes on to say, forgetting what is behind. 2020 has been filled with a lot of disappointments. I was supposed to be in Greece today with some of you doing Journeys of Paul, the beautiful Grecian backdrop around me. But I'm with you here today, which is almost just as good. They thought your job wasn't relevant, or you had to shift what your experiences had to be just to meet the demand signal of the new job. Others are maybe dealing with the passing of loved ones. Paul isn't here saying that you shouldn't deal with your past wounds or celebrate the good things that have happened in 2020, because certainly some grand things have happened during 2020. But however, some of us can tend tend to set up camp in the way that things should have been. If life worked out the way I wanted it, life would be much better. It can cause us to be paused in the past and take on bitterness and resentment. The pandemic has ruined everything, and nothing is as it should be. This thing can keep us frozen in the past, not wanting to move forward. However, because of Christ, our past doesn't define us. Life is about who we will be and can be in Christ. Paul didn't live in the past. He was once an enemy of the church until 
he had this powerful encounter with Christ. We will call it a Christophany in theological terms. As he was on the road to Damascus, the scales fell off his eyes and he saw the world in a grand way. He soon became a champion for the kingdom of God. The theme of moving forward seems to be part of Paul's writings. Therefore, if, everyone is, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone away. The new is here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Paul is straining ahead for what is new in Christ. The word straining is this pushing of everything we have, both body, mind, and soul, forward to something new, to something grand. Paul says he's pressing on. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Have any, any of you run a race? Those of you who have run a long distance may have hit the wall, this feeling that you can't go forward any longer. I talked to my sister who is a big runner, especially before she had kids. She ran the Boston and the Chicago Marathon, and just before she became pregnant, she ran a 50K, which is over 30 miles. And she said, I certainly hit the wall when I was on this run. I felt like my legs couldn't go any forward, but she kept pressing forward no matter what. She didn't want to stop, even though her body was saying, just go to the side and curl up and take a little nap. She kept moving forward. It was certainly a mind over matter event for her. In the 2015 Austin Marathon, a runner, kept, a runner hit the wall, but she kept pressing on. Here's a clip of the end of the race. The Boston, or the, Boston, the Austin Marathon on the men's side. On the women's side, it was Cynthia Jarrett, but the story is a little bit later. This unbelievable scene on your right is 29-year-old Yvonne Nagedich from Kenya. She was leading throughout the race and then literally hits the wall. Doesn't want any help. There's prize money involved. So she crawls to the finish. What an amazing sight. You know, Dave, sometimes we use that term, hitting the wall, uh, loosely, but when you see it actually happen to a runner, you can see wow. what it really means. What a scene right there. She was awarded second place prize money for her heroic effort to cross the finish. Yvonne, I was inspired by the tenacity in her eyes. She had this eye of the tiger. I am going to finish this race. Her body said no, but something in her mind and soul says, I'm going to keep pressing on, pressing forward. Paul's writing, pressing on, is connected with the olive press. Here's a picture of an olive press. And there's several different styles, but I really like this one. The one with a hole in the middle. Typically, a rope would be placed in it, and it would be attached to a pack animal, sometimes a donkey. And the donkey would go around and around in circles, crushing the olives. And the olives would be pressed not once, but three times. The first pressing would bring out the best of the oil. And this would be given back to the temple, back to God, the first fruits. The second pressing of the olives would be made to make medication, cosmetics, and oils for food. The third pressing, when it doesn't look like the olives can give any more, a little more was left for soaps and oils for lamps. The pressing transforms the ordinary fruit into a beautiful, rich oil. The pressing brings the best out in the oils of the olive to the oil. The olive press also has a connection to the Garden of Gethsemane, which means press of oils. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was preparing his body, mind, and soul for the most challenging event of his life, when he was going to stretch out his arms and be pressed for humanity, he prayed three times as he was preparing for the cross. Jesus was under so much pressure. He sweated blood. If you feel that you're under pressure, you're in the company of Christ. If you think the world is not the way it should be, you're in the company of Christ. When life is hard and you feel hard pressed, maybe it's time for us to hit our knees and pray. Not just once, but multiple times. After Jesus arrived at the garden with his closest friend, Peter and the sons of Zebedee, he said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. How many here today feel overwhelmed to the depths of their soul? 
Scripture says that Jesus went a little further. He fell with his face to the ground and prayed, Hey, God, if I don't have to go through this, please don't let me go through this. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was straining for a difficult time. He was pressed by the challenges that were ahead of him. But Jesus went a little further. Jesus pressed on. During my last year of seminary began a challenging three years of my life. In three years, I lost both of my grandparents and both of my dad's brothers. It forever changed our family dynamic, especially those closest to their family members, like my cousins Cassie and Lexi. Here's a picture of them. Cassie is on the left and Lexi is on the left. They lost their beloved father in their 20s. Robert was this adventurous soul who went around the world doing great, wonderful things, but he succumbed to brain cancer. Tragedy had hit their lives like never before. But they went a little further. They pressed on. This time last year, I was in Santa Fe doing a wedding for Cassie. And I love doing weddings, especially for family members and ones that I'm really close to. And this was probably the, the grandest, the prettiest wedding that I had ever seen in the backdrop of the mountains of Santa Fe in this little Pueblo resort. During the rehearsal, and any rehearsal I do, as we're going through the practice of the wedding, I look at the couple and I say, hey, no matter what happens, tomorrow you're going to be married. No matter what happened the next day, the cool, crisp autumn air turned to an overcast, dreary, rainy day, and it eventually snowed later that night. And the wedding was supposed to be outside, but had to be moved inside. And because it had to be moved inside, things that they had planned and dreamed about that she had planned for a year or so had to be canceled or changed to accommodate it going inside. Wedding days are stressful as it is. But when all these issues came to fruition, I thought, oh no, I need to go check on my cousin because I've seen brides get stressed out by smaller issues. But when I talked to Cassie, she had this peace, this peace that passed all understanding. She was calmer about her wedding than I was. I'm the pastor. I'm supposed to have this unanxious presence while I'm ministering to other people. I says, you know, David, I had to deal with the death of my dad, that long journey as he succumbed to brain cancer. I have a new perspective on life. You know, the wedding's going to happen no matter what. These little things are going to be okay. I was just so impressed by her maturity and her view of the world. And then a couple months, just before the pandemic hit, I found out that their marriage had ended. Not anything she pictured in her life after having this big grand wedding. And I reached out to her again and said, you know, this is not what I want. It's tough. I'm struggling with this, but I know that God is with me. Cassie kept pressing on. She pressed on when the wedding wasn't going her way. She pressed on when the marriage didn't end the way that she expected expected it to. And during this whole season of struggle when the, her father was passing and to the wedding, to the ending of her marriage, her and her sister were starting a new company, a little boutique called Dos Femmes, two sisters in El Paso. It's a clothing boutique, and they make their own earrings. They have really cool stuff. Running a small business is challenging enough as it is. But then the pandemic hit, which threw the world for a loop. So Cassie, this young woman, is dealing with the passing of her dad, dealing with a marriage, and dealing with running a business during a pandemic. Yet Cassie and Lexi pressed on, and praise be to God, the company is actually doing really well. And Cassie's faith is thriving and has had amazing growth through these processes. She's the chair of her SBRC active in Bible studies and worship at the church that we both grew up at. When I talk to her, it's evident how much she loves Jesus. And she has this beautiful Christian mature view of life that inspires me to keep pressing on when life gets hard. 
She's actually mentoring two sisters who work at her company, Dose Femmes. Each pressing in Cassie's life was an opportunity for her to lambano after Christ, after Christ was chasing after her. Much like the olive pressing brought the best out of Cassie, the pressing did not destroy her but transformed her into an even more deeply devoted follower of Jesus. Our pressings are not meant to destroy us, but transform us. Our pressings are not meant to destroy us, but transform us. This is not just Cassie's story or Paul's story, but it's all of our stories. If you don't think you can go any longer, keep in the pressing. If you're in the midst of this digital world, trying to learn trying to stay forward with your teachings, stay in the pressing. If you're struggling with your children's choices, stay in the pressing. If you're struggling with your parents' choices, stay in the pressing. If you feel like you've lost everything, stay in the pressing. If your heart is broken, stay in the pressing. If you still have open wounds, stay in the pressing. Our pressings are not meant to destroy us, but transform us. After the marathon, John Connolly, the race director, said this of Havon, quoting, you ran the bravest race. You crawled the best, the bravest crawl I have ever seen in my life. You have earned great honor. The video of her just crawling forward, just saying, I'm going to reach that goal. I am not going to stop no matter what happens. Even though my body aches and says to stop, my mind, my soul says, go forward. Keep pressing on. Paul spoke about life's pressures in his second letter to the Corinthians. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. People of God, we are not being destroyed, but we are being transformed. And let us press on to that goal of Jesus Christ each and every day. Praise be to God. Let us pray. God, 2020 has thrown all of us four loops. And some of us are burnt out and tired and feel that we can't go any forward. But you are a God calling us to move forward, to press on to that goal, to be in deeper relationship with you each and every day. And you never leave us. Even though it feels like in the pressing we can't go any forward with you, we can do all things. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen.